This is Jimmy Fennessy interviewing Mrs. Lubna Ibrahim on December 2nd, 2018 for Denison University's Oral History Digital Collection Project on Arab Americans in Central Ohio. Lubna Ibrahim is going to talk about life in the United States as an Arab American. So I'd like to thank you again. Thank you for interviewing with us. We really deeply appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so I guess to begin, uh, uh, maybe you could talk with us about your early life, being born in Sudan, um, maybe like a favorite childhood memory. Yeah, I was born in Sudan. I studied in Sudan until I finished my college. And uh, then I moved here, I got married and moved here. Uh, that was uh, 19 years ago. And uh, so my, my um, early childhood and, and um, uh, early years in, in Sudan were um, full of fun memories. I enjoyed every part of it. So uh, we have big families there. The typical uh, way of life there is, is to have uh, big families. The houses are uh, big with um, extended family, uh, probably living in uh, different quarters of the same house. And um, uh, the, the childhood memories are usually like what I, I, what is dear to my heart is the long hours of play with cousins. So it, it would be like 15 kids at all times, <laughs> like the whole neighborhood. But it's 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 uh, that that's how you would spend uh, every um, afternoon after coming from school, just enjoying and playing outdoors. So uh, th these are uh, the typical things. Then I uh, got into um, the University of Khartoum, which is the um, like the, 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 the Khartoum is the capital, and this is the uh, most um, uh, original and first uh, university in uh, the Sudan, and uh, it, it's it's uh, the biggest. It, it used to take the um, like the uh, biggest number of uh, students, including the all the professions that that um, are current. And so I studied uh, there and graduated. And then um, I worked, like I volunteered for one year and worked for like three years uh, before I traveled to, to the U.S. And um, so that's about it. That's about my years there. <laughs> lots of uh, family memories, lots of warmth, uh, remembering all the family, and it's, it, it was it was uh, full of wife and um, uh, friends and, and family memories. Um, what, what did you specialize in? At, uh, at, at the university, I studied uh, agricultural economics. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, that, that was my specialty. Okay. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, at that time, it was uh, like a um, line of study that involves many sciences. So first, they give you the first year with all the sciences, like they do here for the for the general admission, and then you get exposed to to um, as you go along. It's a five year five years honor program. As you go into the program, you get into uh, the, the specialty um, uh, lines more and more. But what was nice about it is that it, it exposes you to a very wide range of uh, sciences before specializing in the um, agricultural economics part of it. Okay. And, and then did you work in that field for the three years? Uh, uh, it, partly because uh, it's, it's very related to development planning and uh, that's, that's the field I, I worked at. So it was, uh, uh, I worked with um, an international uh, non-profit organization that was operating in Sudan at that time. It had it, it had its headquarters here in the U.S. And uh, what they do is that they um, design projects for uh, developing countries, third world countries. And uh, the, the, some of the projects were agricultural in nature and some were uh, not. So we, we had projects. I was um, involved in like two agricultural projects and two uh, Medical, um, it, it, it's it's uh, health and uh, extension information uh, like like a public health project for um, uh, women and children. 
So these are the, the lines of their, uh, their typical non uh, non-profit organizations. They bring uh, funds. Uh, donations from big donors like it's, it's very similar to what the UN does United Nations and then the, the they fund these projects in third world countries and um, have annual reports to the donors and that, that, that's that's the type of work I enjoyed it to the maximum because it, it was very um, it, it was very uh, very satisfying and I got involved into into the details of those projects from the beginning you get to, to be Part of the design team, the data collection, and then you you have to impress the donors with with your proposal, and then you get the funds and start, and then have monthly and um, quarterly and annual reports back to them. That, that's the type of work we did. It's very cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> May so, I ask a question? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Um, what what first interested you, like in this field? Like, how did you? Like decide, I, I would like to go, like learn more about agriculture and the economic side of things. First, first of all, in, when when I first got into that field, yes, it's uh, more of like uh, to be honest, you know how here you get into into the the science field mm -hmm. altogether, like like at OSU, uh, mm -hmm. they they get you into the forty eight prep program, and then from there you get uh, aligned to whichever um, uh, line you're, you're into. Mm -hmm. So so they get you on the first year on, on um, uh, general sciences, mm -hmm. and then you go to the specifics. Mm -hmm. And back back at home with the scarce resources and the um, very limited seats in, in the universities, it's sometimes, and part of it was that, <laughs> uh, uh, in my case, it's sometimes what, what um, available seats are there that you have to get into it's not it's not like uh, the freedom that you have here because of the availability of all the fields that you can change your field or just get into um, with whichever line that you're really interested in so at that young age I wasn't really into uh, the, the agricultural economics uh, part of it but but it was the, the seats that are available. But the, the study itself was very rich and I enjoyed it because it, it exposes you to a wide range, as I said before, of um, sciences. So we would take biochemistry, we would take botany, we would take uh, at the same time uh, uh, horticulture on the, on, the, uh, on, on the agricultural side, crop production, crop protection so it's very wide and then you will get into the economics when I get into it I got interested on the economics part of it and that's why on the last year when you specialize I got into that but the development planning part after I graduated that was something of my choice that, that I wanted that line of, of uh, studying projects and um, uh, seeing how how development planning and, and uh, development projects sustainable development could really change communities, could really affect uh, poor um, societies. So uh, did your professional career bring you to the United States? No. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> it was uh, because I got married and, and, and we moved. my husband was already here. He was uh, studying at OSU and so I joined him. So it wasn't my, my profession that brought me here. That, that, there was that option, but uh, I didn't pursue it because the headquarters of the um, organization was was here in Atlanta, and that that was a, a a thought at some point in time that I would come and join them, but it never happened because I just he was in OSU, and uh, we just continued living here. <laughs> so, so that's how you came to Columbus, then you? Yes. Okay. Uh, how did you meet your husband? If you don't mind me asking. No problem. <laughs> we were at the same uh, uh, college, the same university, University of Khartoum, uh, in Sudan. So we, we were uh, at the same, the, the same actually um, field. Also, he he, he studied there uh, agriculture, but he he specialized in uh, biochemistry. Uh, so when he came here, he he uh, pursued pharmacy. Uh, for a master's degree. Or graduate. Graduate. Oh. Uh, could you talk about some of the outreach you do, like through working with the New Islamic Center? Uh, we, we, we have a big outreach uh, department that I'm part of, but 
like um, um, <laughs> some, some of the other members are doing huge steps and big work. I'm just a, a tiny, <laughs> little, um, I have a tiny, uh, like, um, additions to that. But uh, we, we do um, mainly what, what the outreach department is, is uh, concerned for is uh, building bridges and relationships with, with the local community. With, uh, and, and mainly Hilliard and Dublin communities because we are located in Dublin and uh, the Columbus community at large. Uh, so uh, uh, we're reaching out to schools, um, churches, synagogues and having a lot of events throughout the year uh, for um, like spreading um, Apart from building the bridges and have social and personal relationships with, with uh, these um, entities, uh, having uh, the, the ability to explain to them or to, to present our culture, our uh, religion, in a way that, that's, uh, that's um, as, as how we see it and, and how it should be presented. And that, that's something very important, I think, in, in the current uh, age and time, to be able to, to see the different uh, facets of, of how, how many communities um, can explain Islam. And, and that's, that's a big thing of uh, what we're doing. Um, can you talk about some of the challenges you've encountered doing that, like you know, expressing the culture and religion? For the outreach, I would, I would say because because as I'm telling you, it's it's just being events and the the challenges of those would be uh, more uh, geared towards um, people who are really uh, in on the design team for those programs. I just joined on the um, like uh, giving tours of the center, giving uh, talks when we have um, open talk dialogues with with uh, like like we have Islam one on one every Saturday. Which, which uh, invites, I, and I think um, Dr. Uh, Masri have uh, invited some students before uh, throughout the years to, to these uh, talks. It's like a one hour uh, talk uh, informing the students, usually from the universities around uh, Ohio, about uh, what Islam is all about, and just in a nutshell, the, the basic information about it. And uh, so, so Regarding the challenges and all that, I'd, I'd probably uh, be more comfortable having uh, having uh, them uh, talk about that. But at the same time, I'm involved, like uh, as I told you, in the school. It's a weekend school, and I've been uh, a board member for four years. Now I'm just part of the executive committee on running of the um, of the volunteer work. It, it's just a center that's run by a number of volunteers and um, doing doing uh, really important work in. in as I said, mainly uh, having having our uh, children of the Muslim community in uh, Columbus be related to their roots and at the same time being good citizens and, and uh, being uh, a true part of their communities wherever they are and just just that, that type of work. That's what I'm involved in. Well, you mentioned like uh, making sure people are, are like the the youth, I guess, are in touch with like their roots and uh, like, like their cultural history. Like uh, in, in the other interviews, like it, it's been striking. Like that can be challenging sometimes in America. Like to get people to relate, or you know, like for your kids. I, I guess my question is, for your kids, like how do you uh, make sure like they know what it means to be Sudanese and what it means to be a Muslim uh, while living in America? Well, it's something that you you uh, instill in them at a very young age, and that's what I've been doing. And so it's 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 something that that um, uh, you can't just keep talking about it. It's not something that you tell them. You have to be proud of that you're Sudanese. That does that that sentence does not mean anything. It's just a sentence, empty words. But but you have to 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 um, relate it to something that they love. I take them to visits there whenever I can, and uh, they, they they still visit. We, we have extended uh, family back in Sudan. They enjoy it, and then you 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 uh, expose them expose them to the real culture there. They they see uh, 
their roots, their city, their uncles, their, their aunts, their grandpa, and their, 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 all those people, and they get to talk to them, they get to, to, to have a relationship with, with them. And so this, this way, um, you, the way I think about it is that uh, I, see, I see them here, that they're, they're enriched, they're, they have something more than others rather than being different than, than others. So, so if, if you, and that, that's the, the, my personal way of viewing it, if, if you have them grow up thinking that they're, they're, they're a little bit uh, blessed with having something more, so they appreciate it because I, I tell them like most of their neighbors when they visit their grandpa it's just uh, in another state here or something but you have to, to go 14 hours across the Atlantic and see how how far and how deep you have roots in Africa and so you, you make it a little bit exciting for them and and it does they, 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 they do like I, I don't uh, uh, the truth is as they say alhamdulillah in, in al Arabi um, I haven't encountered um, up until now any kind of struggle for, for them. Um, I see them proud of their identity and uh, able to, to, to uh, like uh, project it or, or present it uh, proudly always and, and just um, there's no conflict as I see it between, between uh, between that and, and their American identity, because it, it, it's it's what you want it to be, and and like, like some other people, some people have different views. Uh, you you take the best from where you're living. I can take the best. There are some some practices and some some something in our uh, culture in Sudan that I do not like at all. So I leave those. And there are some uh, practices and some things in the American culture that I do, do not like. And I leave, leave those so they have the, the best of both worlds. And they, they can just um, live with, with both uh, in, in a very uh, equilibrium status. <laughs> um, do you speak Arabic with them? Yes, they do speak Arabic. Uh, and I was keen, except my my youngest, he's, he's, he does speak Arabic, but he's, I, I'd say, um, the weakest, you know, because they speak to each other in, uh, in English more. So, so he's, he's, he's uh, at a disadvantage there, but for, for uh, all of them, they do speak Arabic. They go to the, to the school I'm telling you about, too, so they, they do also write the language, they, they know it, and uh, speak it. So, uh, you speak the Sudanese dialect in the home, yes. and then they learn the Fusha yes. and the, yes. or the yes. classical. Yeah, yeah, the, the Sudanese dialect is always at home. And although sometimes also, because you're 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 just living here, you, you find that uh, you're switching to, to English a lot of times. But we we make uh, an effort to to speak uh, in the home uh, Arabic so that they can they can uh, keep it. Um. Um, so, in the first part of the interview, we talked a lot about like uh, your cultural experiences. And, um, but during the break, you you, meant, you talked a little bit about like some of the political struggles that have happened in Sudan. And you've gone back like, intermittently throughout the years, but um, I guess what, what has your experience been uh, watching like the political issues in the civil war from like happening in your country from America? Is it difficult? Like, how does it feel? It's very sad. It's a very sad uh, feeling. I've, I've been, uh, throughout the years, I've been visiting because I have extended family there, actually. Um, my, my dad was there until he died. So um, I've, I've been going back. But uh, very sad every time I go with the deterioration I see. And it's all because of the um, political uh, situation. It's just like a vicious circle. It starts there, and everything uh, gets down uh, from when, when when there's corruption and the political system is corrupt. Then everything falls apart. It's it's just a domino effect. Everything goes down. So it's it's just um, it's, it's a sad feeling to see that 
every time I go, especially um, that that uh, we have been, uh, as I explained, uh, like one of the strongest um, real uh, democracies in Africa, and uh, the, and uh, so that the democracy was overthrown, and that's what uh, the country is still suffering from. So uh, we're just hoping for the future that. Uh, Everything like from our experiences and the experiences of uh, all uh, uh, peoples and other nations, it it, it, it ends. Like we, we're full of hope that that uh, these difficult times end. Although the, there was uh, the civil war and uh, was the split into two countries, that that was uh, the result of a long civil war. It's not um, it, it, that happened long before uh, this the current government was there, but it was escalated and, and some of the results of uh, the escalation was the split after uh, like uh, a poll, a nationwide poll in the south, and that, that was the choice of the people. But uh, all that, like we, we still have hopes that one day it will end because historically uh, these, uh, these difficult times end at one point in time. That's what we're hoping for. Um, uh, a new and a new era, new changes. If they improve, if they, you never know what the future brings. But um, the deterioration is mainly because of the overthrow of the democracy that was there. Since it was, we had a parliament, we had parties, we had free press, we had all that at some point in time. Uh, what year was the democracy overthrown? Nineteen eighty-nine. Yeah. And uh, which year did you? Come to the United States. Um, what year? Um, it's not even on to something. Yeah, maybe 1998, 1998 or 1999. Okay. Yeah. So, so I lived. I lived there after the the, the if That's your question. I, I I lived there. I don't know exactly how many years, but a few years before before. Uh, I came here during during the, that. So, like first, it, it it's it's the shock that everything is different. <laughs> it's just a coup in the morning, and nobody goes out for for like forty eight hours a curfew, and then everything starts to change. And then, but at the same time, the, the democracy that was there was not long lived either. So it wasn't like for twenty years when when really the um, unions and everything that would uh, uh, make sure that this does not happen were strong enough. It was only a few years uh, since an earlier uh, dictatorship was there too. So, so it's 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 it's, <laughs> it's a revolving pattern, I guess, since 1964. Sudan uh, got its independence in 1956. So uh, it, it was a British column, and then from 1956 onwards, it's been uh, this. Uh, this this turnover of democracy the democracy comes and then so two two very big um, uprisings one in 1964 and then again in 1986 which were the uprisings of the of the people something similar to the Arab Spring that happened uh, recently in some Arab uh, nations the people would take to the streets real uh, revolutions and then uh, democracies uh, put in place but again because it doesn't, it, 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 before all the institutions are strong enough to protect it, it, it's, uh, it gets overthrown again by uh, the military. Uh, is there a perception that that's the result of like the British colonial uh, legacy, would you say? Some people think so, because the, some, some people think so, um, but it, it, you, you can't uh, blame it uh, all on, on that. It, it, it's certainly, uh, a big part of everything because we have we had to struggle at some point as a people just to get our freedom just to, to be um, free and uh, to have the independence and so that that that's uh, part of it uh, the whole country I think united at, at those times against the foreigner against the, uh, the the enemy who were who was colonizing the country and that there are some 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 of the um, seeds or the for, for the problems were, were put at that early stage 
but not all. I would not say this because um, there, there are, uh, in all fairness, the, the way I see it, there are some uh, positive uh, things that they did do. Although no, no one uh, is, uh, nobody would be for uh, colonization or anything. But then th there are the the things that that uh, were, were done, like um, big projects. Uh, develop, developing the countries that they were colonizing, it, it wasn't like they, they left it as a desert. They were educating the people, they, they put the first um, foundations for universities, for uh, public work, for all that. So, so it, it's not, I cannot blame it all on them. It, it, after the independence, you just blame it on the, mm -hmm. on the people themselves and their ignorance in not protecting their uh, democracies. Um, do your, you know, your knowledge and your experience in this, does that affect how you perceive democracy in America? Um, it, it does, <laughs> it does, of course, because, um, like, uh, you, you see here, here and there the, the differences and, and what ultimately it's supposed to be, and, uh, any system that, that is up until now, there's no perfect system political system that has been created by man, but at the same time, uh, what's happening here is, is, is the closest to perfection that you will find uh, on Earth, which is, which is good, and it's protected by, by the people themselves, by many of the laws. And, but, but my perception of how it is is definitely uh, affected. By, by my past experiences and uh, where I come from originally and what, what's happening in my country and you see the differences you see the uh, like um, what 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 um, benefits the freedom can give you like like uh, just the simple open talk and, and discussions that you cannot have anymore in, uh, back in uh, all these countries gives you gives you a very uh, a real appreciation of of uh, of what we have here, like so, some of the basic discussions you cannot have there with, without being uh, just looking over your shoulders. Uh, is this group okay, so that I can really talk freely or not? And that's the reality of it. That's the reality in many of the in many of the African countries, Sudan being one of them. Do you find that people in America are aware of? the issues facing Sudan or uh, the political not really situation. from my experiences is that uh, when uh, the, the other countries for some reason are so well exposed especially the, the Sudanese people back in Sudan they're very um, uh, well informed and exposed to what's going on around the world and, and uh, very interested in the news of uh, everywhere else for some reason you you'd find like the average the average um, person on a cross cross section in Sudan, educated person, the average ed ed educated person, very aware of that. While here, maybe sometimes I think that's because how huge the US is. It, it's it's just <laughs> I think about it sometimes as a continent, not really um, a country that uh, people are just uh, interested and aware of what's going on in the US only, and very rarely that you'll find them, except if their profession is very close to, to developments in the um, in other countries that you'll find them interested. But world affairs and world news, especially in Africa, are not part of the um, part of their uh, general information on a, on a regular basis. Would you like to see more information? Yes, of course. I, I would like to see more of that because that, that makes you uh, makes the people here much more informed and, and it's, it's um, the whole world is now getting more and more into becoming one village and so 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 uh, the political decisions that are ultimately taken uh, that are taken here the people should they're affecting us and our families and our extended families back in uh, our homes and that these decisions are being taken by the minority the politicians who, who, who are uh, Involved in that, while the uh, why the vast uh, majority of the people have no clue uh, about uh, about anything going there. So if they were informed and, in, and involved, then there would be much better decisions regarding uh, political decisions from the U.S. regarding um, 
those countries uh, in Africa, in the Middle East, everything. So the more information, the more um, awareness there is, if, the more exposure the American people are to, to outside cultures, to, to other ways of living, the, 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 the more uh, that would uh, lead into um, peace and, and, and more uh, and wiser decisions towards those countries. This is a broad question, just building off of that. If you had to tell someone in America, like, if someone asked you about Sudan, what would you want them to know about Sudan? I'd uh, want them to know about the Sudanese personality, the Sudanese person. That, that's that's what's that's um, our treasure, I think. So. Uh, uh, you, you, the, the way we think, and, and you'll find um, many, many Sudanese people will have will join me in, in thinking that the biggest thing is the, is the Sudanese uh, personality, which is a very uh, unique and peculiar uh, type of combination uh, in, in its uh, cultural background, cultural um, identity, and the um, actually the, the roots of, of that personality. A very generous uh, person, in particular, very open. Uh, uh, we like guests, and um, we like to, to have guests a lot, and that's part of, of of our inherent culture. Like to be Sudanese means that you you love to have guests and to have foreigners and to have to interact with other uh, with other cultures. That that's for some reason it's not just just part of uh, um, uh, daily life. It's part of your culture. That that's how you should act. Otherwise, everyone will be very. So what, what's wrong with them? <laughs> so uh, that's that's and and uh, the the real combination and interaction between two uh, cultures in a very nice way, which which is the African, the very African uh, part of it, and uh, on the other side, uh, the very Arab uh, part of the Sudanese personality. These these two sides mix in a very unique way in the Sudanese personality. And um, because we, we have uh, Christians uh, uh, in uh, Sudan, but the, the wide majority is uh, Muslims. So the, the Arab part of the um, culture is very much affected and influenced by the Islamic uh, culture as a religion. So, so all that have mixed, and, and the main reason is, is um, that Sudan is in Africa, very African country, but there was, was a large migration of uh, Arab tribes long ago who settled there, and then that, that was the, the mixture. Uh, so so the, the ending result is this um, very fascinating uh, combination of, uh, of uh, cultures and uh, you'd find that that uh, if you meet a Sudanese an average Sudanese person he's, he's, he relates very much to, to his African roots and at the same time his main language is Arabic and uh, he's, he speaks uh, Arabic and relates to the um, culture the um, uh, not only the like the, the religion is of course something different but relates to the uh, arts the poetry the um, uh, just all all uh, sorts of uh, arts that are um, related to the Arab world, so we're, we're part of those. And some some uh, some sometimes we think uh, uh, about our uh, Arab part as just the language. We, we speak the Arabic language, but we're uh, Africans. Um, and then a question similar vein: then if uh, like if you had to. If someone, like if I came up to you and I said, what, what would, and I know nothing about Islam, what would you want me to know about uh, Islam? I'll tell you, first thing, it's, uh, the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll simply try to define it. The, the name itself, like if, you, if, if, if I'm talking about Christianity, so I'll say it's coming, it's, it's a, the root word is Christ. Jesus Christ from those the followers of Jesus Christ are those I, I might say that but if you're asking me about Islam then I'll tell you it's it's uh, the word itself has only two parts of it total submission to one and only God so it's it's the, the oneness of the God that's the main thing and then the other thing is um, uh, peace 
So the, the root word is, is salam because you you have some background in Arabic. Salam means peace, and Islam is it, the root word for it comes from there. And the other thing is is Islam, where, where total submission. These are the, so it's 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 a religion that's uh, that's peaceful, and the core of it is total submission to one entity uh, that has the power over everything, and it's one that that's the the, the main the, the main thing that. Uh, Muslims would believe in, in that Allah is one. That that's the starting point. Everything up after that is just we we all have differences in in looking at it. But the first thing is that it's very peaceful. It's um, a religion that encourages you actually to get into uh, relationships with with other peoples. There is a verse in Quran that that, that, that says that Allah has created us. We believe that He is the one who created us. Uh, one of the reasons was. And, and, and one of the functions for us on this earth is to get to know each other, other peoples, and to interact with them. And to know all of us at the end of the day that there is no one nation or one uh, uh, ethnicity that's better than the other. And according to him, the best of you is, the, is, is uh, whoever fears uh, God more. So, Glorifies him more, so there's it, it, it's very it's very um, inherent in the whole belief that we are all equal. We, we believe. If, if you don't believe in that, then you are not truly a Muslim. If you if you if you have any doubt that there is one ethnicity that's better than the others, then you are not a true uh, believer. So these are all things that are not highlighted when 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 there is talk uh, about Islam. Sadly, for, for what's going on, but these are the core values of Islam uh, as a religion. So it, 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 it encourages you to know the other, to live peacefully with the other, the peaceful um, coexistence between all uh, other religions. We just we, we can just live, we, we um, portray, we give uh, present ourselves uh, as Muslims, but we, are, we, we can live with uh, other uh, religions. We can show what we believe in, those who like it, and, and, and the only re the only reason why would they why they would want to join if is if they're impressed with our attitudes or, or, or not with anything else if they do uh, if they are impressed and they want to join then welcome if not welcome too so th that these are the basic things about Islam we have nothing to to do with hate with uh, rejection of other uh, faith with um, Thinking that uh, uh, as as cities we are better, and actually there's an, an, uh, at the center. If you visit the center, you'll find uh, we have many posters and, and we have many lectures designed to show the the similarities between the um, the the basic fundamentals of Islam itself and the U.S. Constitution, which is very um, very fascinating to, to see that that it's it's. Um, there's a document that was prepared by by people, uh, and after many years of thought, it's like the ultimate thing of what they came out with, and it has uh, it resembles a lot of the core values that we have in justice, in that not, no one is above the law, in in many of the things that are uh, very um, uh, very core and very fundamental in our belief. One more question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our. Last question before we wrap up. Um, if you had to describe like uh, your identity, who is uh, Lubna Ibrahim? <laughs> so you can take time to think. That's quite the question. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, <laughs> look at the ceiling now. <laughs> so who is Lubna Ibrahim? She's a uh, the first thing uh, um, I'd, uh, I'd usually like to identify myself with right, is, is, is my religion. So I'd say I'd start, I'd start by being a Muslim because that, that's, that's how and, uh, and it's, it's part of my identity and it's, it's obvious. You'll, you'll always see me wearing the scarf which means I'm, I'm proud of of this identity, and it's the first thing that shows when when uh, I'm speaking, which with, and, and especially here in the U.S., it's so obvious. So so 
uh, even uh, so identifying the first thing was be would be in my whole being is being um, a Muslim alhamdulillah the second thing uh, is uh, being a, a Sudanese African American so if you if you say African American you're missing that Sudanese part so so it, it's just because it's so different we're, we're, we, we have so um, uh, um, so much traits Sudanese people that are just very very uh, true to us as as people it doesn't mean that uh, we're better than any others but we're, we're very um, we're very um, uh, unique we're, we're on our own not better but just just different we're different that's that's the way I, I, I identify so and, and the American part of, of my identity is, is uh, something I'm proud of and something that I'd, uh, I'd always uh, cherish and I'm, I'm happy that I, this is something that I was able to to accomplish uh, during my life.